Hello and welcome. It's a landmark bill which if passed could change one of our worst India stories. The fact that men, women and children just don't get enough to eat. We'll look at that. Why parliament can't function to discuss this bill, let alone pass it. The entire India story and also the battle between two models of development. I'll discuss that with Professor Martya Sen joining me today, Nobel Laureate. Thank you, Professor Sen. Professor Martya Sen, it's a time when growth and development have even become buzzwords in election campaigns. And there are two models of growth which uh, people talk about now. There's the Narendra Modi model mantra, really, of maximum uh, governance, minimum government. And there's what many see as the Sonia Gandhi, Rahul Gandhi model of a welfare state, or some would say a handout state, which would include what the UPA's uh, landmark right to food, a food security bill is seen as part of. How would you compare these two models of growth or development? I think, Sonia, to think in terms of only these two models is itself a mistake. You know, I think the big story that in, in the economic development in the world, and particularly in Asia, is the feature of what may be called the Asian model of development. Initiated originally in 1860s, at the time of the Meiji Restoration in Japan, Putting your emphasis on making the country fully, uh, fully literate, educated, providing health care, providing nutritional support in a way that people are able to work and be productive. And that's the model that carried the Japanese forward, along with, of course, intelligent uh, policies about uh, trade and, uh, and, and exchange, mm -hmm. uh, making use of the world market as well as making use of the high capability of the labor of the Japanese uh, cultivated by the state. Korea, South Korea did the same. Taiwan did the same. Small way Hong Kong, Singapore did it excellently that too. But in, in another way, Thailand did to a great extent the same thing. And then finally, after China with the vacillation from the uh, Maoist period, uh, after a few long steps particularly, uh, taking a wrong turn on the health care mm -hmm. by privatizing it, uh, by privatizing insurance, went back to the, the, the model of the state taking responsibility. That to describe it as a handout state, welfare state, is a gigantic mistake. It's the way in which you make human beings capable. And that is central to any economic expansion. Now, in a slower way, Europe and America have done that over hundreds of years. Asia did it in a telescoped way. And China, of course, in, in three decades, have produced, a, you know, have moved from being a fairly poor country to no longer that. All the time, spending much more on this. For example, we spend 1.2% on healthcare. The Chinese spend 2.7% of GDP on the healthcare, more than twice us. In relative terms, not to mention absolute, because their income is higher, so they pay absolutely five times as much on healthcare as we do the state does. So making people well nourished is of course a very big part of well-being, there's no question. But there's nothing against welfare if on ground that it is just welfare. First of all, it's not just welfare, even if it had been, there might have been a strong case for it. But it happens, and that's the big truth, is that the entire lesson of the Asian economic development, which is to simultaneously pursue growth and human development has been missed out in India in one form or another. Much of the opposition uh, sort of the food security bill has come from the fact that people point to, look, we had reforms, India had a growth rate which was talked about all over the world, yet we couldn't manage to feed these children. So we need a completely different model. And in that sense, if we don't have our delivery systems right, how will the food security bill actually work? Yeah, you see, there I have to say that I am on the poor growth side. I think growth is very good for feeding the children. If it fails, it's not because it was having high rate of growth. Uh, our public revenue went more than four times as to what it was, as say, uh, 20 years ago. It's just whether we have been able to allocate enough, as the Chinese had, the Koreans had, the Japanese had, and, and Taiwanese had, and Thais have, to develop human uh, well-being as well as human capability. If we failed, it's not because we were having high growth rate, 
we failed because we didn't supplement. Now, the food security bill, it had many defects, but in certainly in, a, in, in, in terms of the big story, it is a very strong step in the right direction. I mean, there are many ways of making people better fed. Getting employment, the Rural Employment Guarantee Scheme, is also a nutritional scheme. Mm -hmm. But it's not a directly nutritional scheme in the way the Food Security Bill is. So there is every reason to welcome it. The oddity is that there isn't that much controversy on that. You mentioned the two-story Narendra Modi. I take it you're thinking of a BJP mm -hmm. leadership. But I mean, one of the states that's done pretty well on food security is Chhattisgarh, which is um, run by a BJP-run uh, government. So I think when the, if, the, if this bill is actually debated in Parliament, I don't doubt it will pass. The question is, at the moment, since the nature of Indian divisive politics is such that the one thing that we can be proud of, namely the democracy of India, is itself being threatened whereby Parliament can't sit in a session, can't pass things, we can't discuss anything, whether it be Savadrit thing, uh, you know, what happened in Pakistan, to anything else, the full parliament, we have to have that voice as heard. Now, Bangladesh has done a lot of good things, uh, have made big progress in nutrition, we have better nutrition than we have, in female equity, you know, female justice and gender justice and, and equity. On the other hand, one of its failings is, has been the, the opposition doesn't like to sit in parliament when the other, other party is ruling. Now, nevertheless, they have managed to carry out but because they single-handedly carried with the majority party. Well, given the Indian democracy, we don't want to do that. And therefore, we have to find a system whereby the different parties work together. And since this is a subject about kids being better uh, nourished, better fed, expanding the India's growth potential dramatically, on which I believe that despite my, uh, I may disagree with one political party or another, mm -hmm. I don't see a real opposition coming on this side. The opposition coming from uh, the silence of not meeting. Now, that is a real de denial of democracy. So at the moment we're dealing with issues of support for democracy, support for nourishment, support for economic growth, all on the same side. And that's really why I think the pushing through the food security bill right now is a very, very important step to take.